The Duchess of Cambridge has wooed the Bahamas by wearing aquamarine, a prominent color of the country's flag, as she and Prince William continued their Caribbean tour to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee after departing Jamaica earlier today. Prince William and Kate were met by members of the military and eight-year-old local resident Anaya Moss, who presented the couple with a bouquet of flowers, as they touched down at Linden Pindling International Airport in the Bahamas to begin the final leg of their tour. The Duchess wore a stunning aquamarine Amelia Wickstead dress to echo the Bahamian flag with a matching clutch bag, whilst William wore a suave blue suit, black lace-up shoes, and a white shirt. The royal couple went on to meet the country's Prime Minister, Philip Davis, who passed on his best wishes to the Queen. Mr. Davis told Prince William his trip to the Caribbean island was long overdue and said it's great to have you both here. The royal couple were welcomed to the Prime Minister's official office by Mr. Davis who introduced his wife Anne-Marie, who told Kate delighted to meet you. The Duke and Duchess were introduced to a lineup of dignitaries Miles LaRota, the Minister of State and Leon Lundy, the Parliamentary Secretary in the office of the PM. William and Kate then posed in front of a signed reading office of the Prime Minister before being led into a side room to have a private meeting. Mr. Davis told William, We have been looking forward to your arrival. It's long overdue. We are delighted you are here. William replied, Yes very much, excited to be here. Mr. Davis said, And our best wishes are sent to the Queen, and congratulations on her Platinum Jubilee. I do not think we will see the same again, to which William nodded. During the meeting, Mr. Davis and his wife also gifted the couple a hand-painted portrait by local artist Jamal Roll. The Prime Minister posted a tweet earlier today as the couple left Jamaica, welcoming them to the Bahamas. He wrote, The Bahamas welcomes the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge on the occasion of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee as they partake in a series of events within the country spanning the next three days. The couple earlier bid a fond farewell to Jamaica on what is possibly the last royal visit to the island as a Commonwealth realm as their tour to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee headed north to the Bahamas. Ahead of departing for their final destination, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge posted on their official Instagram account, What an amazing trip so far. Thank you Belize and Jamaica. Next stop, the Bahamas. Kate boarded the plane wearing an emerald dress made by London-based fashion designer Amelia Wickstead and a hummingbird brooch gifted to the Queen during her visit to Jamaica in 2002. Flags were flown from the cockpit of a Royal Air Force plane while military personnel marched at a departure ceremony for the royal couple at the airport in Kingston, Jamaica's capital, on Thursday. Earlier today, William quoted Bob Marley as he spoke at a military parade in Jamaica on day six of his Caribbean tour with Kate, saying, You never know how strong you are, until being strong is your only choice. The Duke wore his white tropical dress of the Blues and Royals and proudly displayed his military medals in Kingston, while the Duchess looked glamorous in a white McQueen dress and Philip Tracy hat. The couple attended at the inaugural Jamaica Defense Force Commissioning Parade on the Island Nation for Service Personnel who have completed the Caribbean Military Academy's Officer Training Program. And William said, you are graduating today as officers into an uncertain world.
In your service ahead you will have to contend with climatic, geological, criminal and wider state and non-state threats to our collective safety, security and prosperity. Being asked to lead men and women through uncertainty and danger is daunting. You never know how strong you are, until being strong is your only choice. From here the onus is on you to grow into the leaders you have been taught about in textbooks, watched on your screens and witnessed in your instructors. William also quoted the Queen, continuing, Good leadership is hard to define, but it's easy to recognize in others. As Catherine and I visit Jamaica in celebration of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, I thought I might quote my grandmother on the subject. The Duke referred to her address to the United Nations General Assembly in 2010, in which she said, I know of no single formula for success, but over the years I have observed that some attributes of leadership are universal, and are often about finding ways of encouraging people to combine their efforts, their talents, their insights, their enthusiasm and their inspiration, to work together. Following today's parade, the Duke and Duchess traveled in the same open Topland rover that transported the Queen in 1966 and again in 1994. Later this afternoon, the couple, whose children Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis are at home in London, will be greeted by Philip Davis, the Prime Minister of the Bahamas. William and Kate have been visiting the Caribbean to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, but the trip has faced controversy and reignited Republican calls in Jamaica for independence. Jamaican government insiders criticized William for failing to apologize for Britain's historic role in the slave trade, despite calling the evil practice an appalling atrocity and a stain on our history during an address last night. The Duke denounced slavery as abhorrent, saying it should never have happened as he addressed the issue following days of protests calling for reparations from the royal family. William expressed his profound sorrow at the forced transportation of millions of people from Africa to the Caribbean and North America, a trade which British monarchs either supported or profited from during the 17th and 18th centuries. Speaking during his visit to Jamaica with Kate, he echoed the words of his father the Prince of Wales and went on to acknowledge Jamaica's pain. The Cambridge's tour of Belize, Jamaica and the forthcoming final leg in the Bahamas has prompted demonstrations and statements calling for an apology from the royal family. The future king did not say sorry, just as his father Charles had not during his trip to witness Barbados become a republic. But he praised the Windrush generation of Caribbeans who arrived in the UK a few years after the Second World War to help rebuild the nation depleted by six years of conflict. Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness appeared to suggest his country may be the next country to break away from the monarchy, telling the Cambridges it was moving on and intended to fulfill our true ambitions and destiny as an independent, developed, prosperous country. The Independent has reported the Jamaican government has already begun the process to transition to a republic, with an official appointed to oversee the work. Speaking during a dinner hosted by the Queen's representative in Jamaica, Governor General Sir Patrick Linton Allen, the Duke said, Anniversaries are also a moment for reflection, particularly this week with the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade. Commenting on the sentiment expressed by Charles when he attended the Barbados ceremony that saw it become a republic in November, he said, I strongly agree with my father, the Prince of Wales, who said in Barbados last year that the appalling atrocity of slavery forever stains our history. I want to express my profound sorrow. 
slavery was abhorrent. And it should never have happened. While the pain runs deep, Jamaica continues to forge its future with determination, courage and fortitude. The strength and shared sense of purpose of the Jamaican people, represented in your flag and motto, celebrate an invincible spirit.